we'd all be lying if we've said we've never had fantasies of breaking into secure databases, stealing important files, and most importantly, feeling really cool. I'd also be lying if I said I didn't spend around the cost of my PC to become a certified ethical hacker, only to have my parade shat on when I was told that isn't how it works. I'd also be lying even more if I said I don't regret it. Anyways, in an attempt to recoup my losses, today's video is on Hacknet, a game that lets you live out your hacking fantasies without the risk of being wrecked by the law or, you know, actually hacking anything. Uh, you guys thought I was going to be like an ad or something, didn't you? Yeah, not there yet. Hacknet is a rather unique game, mostly because there aren't a lot of games like it. The only noteworthy title that comes to mind is Uplink. Uh, anyways, the thing about Hacknet is it runs on commands based on real Unix commands and is completely terminal based with only minimal menus and UI elements, which I'll touch on later. Uh, the plot of Hacknet is mostly what makes it great. The story goes like this, a hacker called Bit, who's responsible for developing the most invasive security system ever, has died. However, all of the media reports about it don't really seem to add up. So after about 14 days of inactivity, his failsafe kicks in, sending email instructions to a lone user. And just like in any good story game thing, you play as that lone user. It's up to you to solve the mystery of Bit's death and ensure his software doesn't end up in the wrong hands. Uh, one thing I both enjoyed and didn't enjoy was how the events in the game kind of unfolded, which I will touch on in the conclusion. Uh, in your journey down this road of virtual adventure, you're supposed to climb the ranks in an exclusive hacker group, where your goal is to change the way the outside world sees hackers. Uh, you're mostly going to be set on a series of missions in the form of contracts, but come on, they're just missions like any other game. Uh, where you're tasked with breaking into secure systems, taking only what you need, and there's a huge emphasis on taking only what you need, and leaving without a trace by means of deleting logs and stuff. Uh, in addition to all that, you'll also be tasked with stopping malicious hackers who seem to be bent on reversing what you're trying to do by carrying out malicious hacks with the intent to gain rather than, you know, not gain. So you gotta stop them, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, and hack that. <laughs> that was the most unprofessional thing I've ever said in one of these reviews. Wow. In Hacknet, there are no predefined levels, just a linear storyline, which was pretty neat. It has a legit simulator feel, both due to the lack of video game features, but also just the really authentic looking, genuine feel of the game. Uh, the gameplay is just as simple as the UI. It even teeters on the brink of being repetitive. Uh, each hack you're tasked with executing requires the same or at least very similar steps. Take down a proxy, crack a couple servers, then perform a port hack to gain access. Uh, the only thing that keeps it from being too repetitive is the addition of a couple things like traces and firewalls and I guess you know changing up what you have to do like maybe instead of having to crack three servers you do like four or instead of two you do three and so on and so forth uh, but anyway some systems have firewalls attached which are easily taken down by continuously typing analyze into your terminal uh, when you enter the command the first few times you're left with a bunch of random letters if you keep inputting the command you eventually get a lot of zeros and a few letters all you have to do is input solve followed by whatever the letters spell out it's actually quite simple uh, others have tracing a tracing system implemented that leave you only a short amount of time before you're detected by whomever owns the device you're trying to break into uh, however even that starts to get a little old after a while though in a weird way despite the gameplay becoming incredibly repetitive for a while what really seems to save it is the increasing difficulty with each new level. It goes from executing simple port hack to having to open multiple ports as well as break the firewall and then break and then execute the port hack while a tracer timer is running down. It's not in that order, but you know, that's why I wrote it. So that's how I'm saying it. Uh, there's even a nifty part where you're introduced to hacking people's phones through their linked computers, which is really cool. Uh, of course, even just increasing the difficulty probably won't do it for most people. I mean, come on. This is hardly even a game as it is, right? There are a number of Easter eggs hidden throughout the game in the form of IRC logs, emails, letters, and other various files you can find in people's computers. This kind of relates to what I saw was the main appealing factor of games like uh, Homesick and Gone Home. You get to snoop around people's stuff, giving you a bit of a rush, because as you know, we're all bad people deep down. Uh giving that feeling like you're actually doing something nefarious, or at least in this case. The game gives you the freedom to explore these files as you wish, which again adds to the immersion of, you know, this being a hacking simulator by not restricting these bits to the player. Uh, it makes them feel as though they're really in this person's computer looking through their stuff like a horrible person we really are. But, you know, all that weird emotional stuff aside, on a side note, if you will, these Easter eggs of sorts are indeed insanely interesting. And I have to admit, 
uh, to looking through every single file on every single computer one at a time, effectively doubling the length of my play sessions. So if anything, I'd say get this game just for that because those are that's really cool. However, uh, <laughs> that's really all Hacknet has going for it on the gameplay front. Honestly, it only takes a short time before typing the same few commands and occasionally the tab key when it becomes extremely dull before it begins to, you know, weigh on your sanity a bit. I mean, as much as I love these types of, you know, immersive games, especially ones that combine my passion for computing machines and story-driven <laughs> linear games, I did find myself limiting my playtime to only about an hour or two hours at a time. Uh, anyways, onto the visuals. There's really nothing special about them. It looks like it turned your computer into another computer, like a virtual machine of sorts. Like I mentioned before, there are only a few UI elements. A terminal, display area, side module that shows you RAM usage and running hacks and stuff, and another area that shows you all of the nodes you have at your disposal. There is honestly not much to it. There's very minimal animation. The only movement is really when you execute like a hack of sorts. Like port hack shows all the various password bits moving alongside of the box and stuff like that. Uh, there is a bit where you have to break into a game's database and delete a user's save info, though it's just a simple little clicker, though you do get to interact with it. so you know, get to play it, which is a neat little addition. Uh, other than that, it's a fairly minimal looking game, which is great. Uh, not only because it's a game that takes place in an operating system, but it really helps emphasize the story, which has become extremely compelling towards the middle end bits. That's honestly what I can say I enjoyed most about this game. Unlike other games with hacking elements, uh, where you play as the main character and you control the guy hacking into people's stuff and all that overplayed visual stuff. In Hacknet, you are the main character, which is a wonderful change of pace and a brilliant approach. Though more visual games will let you get more involved, you have a place. Hacknet's approach is still incredibly unique. Um, in fact, that was kind of a weird comparison, but I'll, I'll leave it because it makes a little sense. So, yeah. Games like Hacknet that are reminiscent to the Forgotten Times, where you have to like read what's on your screen instead of just tapping buttons and waiting for stuff to happen are always great. As for the soundtrack, it was produced by artists like Carpenter, Brutes, Brett, I can never read that right, from Hotline Miami, and Remy Gallego. So, you know, it's great. Enough said. Honestly, the fact that I even have to mention that seems a tad disrespectful. Anyways, in closing, my final thoughts as usual. In short, it's a compelling, unique game that's a little more authentic than most games with hacking elements, though at times it does feel extremely repetitive. The game is still designed to not only provide you with no hand-holding, but also stay simple enough for someone with no terminal experience to operate, so I really can't see myself faulting it for that. And there may be opportunities for a little more variety here and there to add both the gameplay and keeping with elite hacker atmosphere, since as we know, the same steps cannot always be applied to different situations. Uh, though there was a little variety thrown in with having to break firewalls or bypass proxies or rest with a trace timer, I feel there could possibly be some more real-worldy stuff brought in. But again, a game like this can only be so authentic before it either becomes too difficult for most without extensive tutorials or a catalyst for carrying out nefarious activities. <laughs> Moving on, I did enjoy this. The This is not a game feeling hacknet portrayed. Though I must admit there are times where you are reminded that this is indeed a game, which is both good and bad. One thing that comes to mind is the contracts, as I mentioned earlier. They're just missions. I mean, I guess that's the best, you know, most effective way of carrying out the story. But I, I honestly don't know what I was expecting, to be honest. It just it felt like a game, which ruined my immersion, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it. Uh, though this game, it still didn't give off, you know, the Hollywood hacking vibe most mediums of entertainment, whether it be TV shows, movies, or whatnot, tend to. Uh, it did feel authentic to an extent. Uh, I must comment the, or commend the, why did I write comment in my script? I must commend the developer for keeping it terminal-based and even basing the commands on real uh, commands, keeping it feeling a bit legit. Wow, rhymes. As well as for all the extras, those are what really tied the game together, turning a rather simple concept into something bigger. Overall, I did thoroughly enjoy this game despite my gripes. I feel it's extremely playable for someone who's not so versed in terminal commands, and it's definitely going on my list of recommended games. Though some people may argue that this can hardly be classified as a game, I only partially disagree. From the compelling story to the authentic atmosphere, it's a truly brilliant game with a moderate to low replay value that's worth $10 simply for the extras alone. I'd recommend it to everyone who would want to play, you know, just for the price of $10. I mean, come on, it's a good price. Just buy it, just to buy it even. I mean, it's still a good game, but I mean, yeah. Uh, be aware, there is some swearing as any good parent knows. Swear words embed in your head better when you read them as opposed to when you hear them. Though, there, is, there are no visual obscenities or nor vocal ones so either, so there you go. My name is Anthony from SneakFirst.com. This video is teetering on 10 minutes, so I'm going to go. Be sure to check out our, our t-shirts, our live streams, socials, all that stuff.
goodbye. Wow, long video. See you guys next time.